Welcome back to the breadboard. In the first of two videos, we looked at the mains controllers for controlling lamps and also a power brick. In this one, we're going to actually have a teardown and see what's inside them. So let's get to it. So first up, let's take apart the S on off controller. So I've already disconnected it from the mains. Always got to be safe than sorry. So the first thing I want to show you is when you take off the end caps, um, your cables come in here. There's two connections. There's no ground connection to these, but they also have um, cable clamps built in so that when you screw this down, it will actually secure the cable nice and firmly for you. There's no just hanging on the end of the wires at the terminal strips. I only had one of the screws in there at the moment, but there are two. Um, the other thing just to note while we're right here is there's also a hole in the side here and there's one on the kitty corner. Um, so that you could put a small screw in there and mount it to some kind of panel or something like that um, for a uh, permanent fitting. So let's just take the screw off the other end. All right. So the exact same thing on the other end applies. Terminals, screw terminals, and there's that extra screw hole here so that you can mount it. And that's... Um, the outside. Now I'm just going to, I have to pry apart the bottom a little bit because um, that's how, the, here's the bottom of the board. Um, you've, this is the ESP Wi-Fi controller chip. And it's also the one that has the intelligence for doing the on off and learning everything else. It is the microcontroller as well as the full Wi-Fi bridge. This is a chip that's uh, available quite a lot of different places relatively inexpensive as a standalone device for things like Arduino Unos, um, running standalone applications or connecting to Raspberry Pis and numerous other devices. And you can see here there's a little bit of the PCB track for it. Now here's where the mains comes in, sorry, the mains is coming out on this end, the mains is coming in on this side. And the first thing to note which I was impressed at is they've actually done the um, cutouts for the um, power so that it doesn't get near the radio and you've got these extra gaps and things uh, for creepage allowances. And then you've got your main, you've got your neutral bar running up right through to the other side on the top. So you've got the, the main, one mains connection coming right across, which is the common neutral. And then you've got the switch side, which comes across here. And again, you've got these routed uh, creepage clearances um, it comes across and then you've got the relay which is basically mounted here on the board and then you've got your output connection here. Um, you've got other uh, miscellaneous power supply circuitry, there's a rectifier. Uh, this is obviously powering itself from the mains so there is a power supply built into here to generate the 3.3 volts. Um, so this is the actual rectifier over this side because um, this is the input over here. Um, this is the output, so sorry, the mains is coming this way across and then the live is switched over to this one and then comes in from this connection. So you've got mains rectification here and then on the other side you'll see some capacitors and switching circuitry and things and then it's powering the ESP chip right here. So let's just pull this out of the box and look at the other side. So now this is the other so now this is the other side of the box, and again, this is where the mains is coming in, like I said. Um, you've got your neutral, and you've got your live. And here's the relay that does the switching. Okay, and then here's the um, small inductor for the switch mode power supply that actually powers the ESP chip. Here's the LED that provides us the uh, a little illumination indication of what's happening. And here's the switch that you press when you want to uh, tune the thing or, sorry, train it to your remote control or get it connected to the Wi-Fi. And then this little module here that's sticking up is actually the 433 megahertz radio. And that's pretty much all that is in here. If I just bring it a little bit closer, I don't know if my camera will focus. No, it won't. I'll just have a look for you instead. The um, relay here is rated at a full 10 amps, so it's not just a claim on the outside of the box, the relay is rated at 10 amps as well. So you've got your mains input here, you've got a MOV4 protection on your input. Uh, on the other side we've got the bridge rectifier and then here's the smoothing capacitor. Um, so after that you've got your little switch mode power supply, there's a, probably a MOSFET switch here, just a small one, for part of the switching regulator. And then you've got your output smoothing capacitor. Uh, this is the switch for 
controlling uh, Wi-Fi configuration and pairing with the remote, then you've got your LED that gives you the indication of what's happening. Um, this would be the switch mode power supply controller probably. Uh, another little chip down here, that is the memory for the ESP chip. Unlike the modules that you can buy from eBay with the ESP 8266s and things like that, this particular, is, this particular build is not using one of the modules, it's actually using the raw chips. So you have the uh, memory device on this side, and then on the other side of the board, you've got the ESP chip right here. Okay, um, like I said, this is the Wi-Fi, sorry, this is the 433 megahertz module uh, running down here and that pretty much is all the components that are in here. Now what you can see, remember we showed, I showed you the traces on this side running down the outside, you might think that that's not going to give you enough power, but on this side there is also another trace which is running down the outside um, in parallel with it. So it's actually using the PCB circuits on both sides of the board. The, uh, yeah, the bottom trace for the switch side is actually thicker than the uh, neutral side because you're going near the edge of the board here. Uh, it's very close to the edge of the board, but of course it's um, securely contained within the plastic box, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. So, um, yeah, I feel quite comfortable, of, you know, if I had a few of these around the house, I wouldn't be too much worried about uh, them from a safety perspective. Of course, they're not waterproof, so you have to put them somewhere where it's not gonna get damp and things like that, but that's the same for most mains devices. Anyway, that's that one. Let's go have a look at the uh, lamp fixture. So the lamp fixture may be a little more difficult to get apart. Um, still just two screws, so let's just pull those out. I think that's the only screws I've seen. Um, of course, there's going to be a little, these are going to be soldered in, probably soldered to the top and soldered to the connector at this end as well. So I may not be able to pull it as much out as you saw with the um, on-off controller as opposed to this lamp one here. But let's see anyway. So let's see uh, screws out. Yep, just coming apart now. So let's just pull this apart a little bit. So here we go. Um, one of the first things that becomes very evident right here is, I uh, can zoom in a little bit now that I've got that apart, is the um, radio module. This is the same radio module as on the other one. And there's the antenna for it right here. You've got the switch reaching down to the board. Um, looks like there is an LED on this one, but I couldn't see it flashing through the case or anything. Maybe the production modules are going to make it a little better. You've got your mains input coming from the bottom of here, so it's soldered onto tabs right inside. Um, here's your ESP module here, uh, and there's probably the memory flash module somewhere for it. Uh, not on this side, so it must be on the bottom as well. You've got your mains rectification over this side. Um, traces are run, all the main stuff seems to be running over here first. The switching on this one, by the way, is actually done through a solid state switch. You can see here with the mains that it's actually this device here. So this is probably a MOSFET or a solid uh, triac or something like that that's being used to do the switching. And that's perfectly fine. And that's probably why they've also derated it to two amps, which you know is more than enough for lamps. Um, the other components look like they're exactly the same as was in the on-off controller. Um, so yeah, there looks like there's a different regulator here, um, unless I just weren't seeing them on the other board. There seems to be a few extra components on this one. I'm not sure why. Um, but, you know, does it really matter? Probably not. Um, but, you know, as far as we can, I can see here, uh, the build again is, is reasonably good. Again, it's secured in a place, you know, for, for normal operation with this, that would not normally have fingers or uh, people. Once you've screwed it in and set it up, uh, it's pretty securely put together. And um, the board, there doesn't seem to be any bodges on it or anything like that that I can see. Um, and, you know, you're not actually hooking this physically up to anything like an Arduino or anything like that. It's completely self-contained, which is pretty much the same for anything that you can buy from, you know, your local hardware store for doing mains and everything else. I doubt you would see anything particularly different. So that completes the um, look at them. I'm, from a review perspective, uh, I would love to have some more of these modules to put around my house. I can see there are lots of use of them. Um, I look forward to you know, looking at the advances of the application to control them, because I think having local control would be a nice thing to have. 
as well as using the cloud service. I think that the maybe the default would be the cloud service because that would cover most people, but being able to have a local service for those that have the ability to um, manage it and do it would be a good thing as well. Maybe maybe that's just available as a software flashing that somebody could do or uh, something like that. It really you know doesn't matter to me. I've got the capabilities to do some software programming with it. Uh, most other people probably would not. And you know, for the price of these under ten dollars, uh, which you know, for the for Europe under five pounds or five euros, whatever, um, great value for money. And yes, they work. You've seen that, and they're pretty easy to configure. So um, I'm quite happy with that. I do have other devices from IT Studio to look at as well, but I'm not going to do that in this video. I just wanted to review the um, the, the two devices that we had and see how well they work. And um, I'm actually quite impressed. I will continue to play with these and things over the coming months and um, yeah if I find anything untoward I will let you know but and you know if you have any questions fire away and I'll happily try to answer them if I can't I'll uh, forward them on to IT studio or you can email them directly yourself so anyway that's um, pretty much it and I'll see you again soon